Hello, I'm Moira Alderson with the BBC News. The National Police in Ukraine say they found evidence of mass graves around the recently liberated city of Izum, which had been under Russian occupation for five months. Speaking to the BBC, the police chief for Kharkiv region, Volodymyr Timoshko, said more than 400 bodies are thought to have been buried in the northeastern city. Our correspondent, James Waterhouse, has more details. Ukrainian investigators have only just been able to get access to the city which has been occupied by the Russians for the past six months. Despite one senior government adviser suggesting war crimes have happened in the city, a source from the regional prosecutor's office says it's too early to tell whether that has happened. While officers say they found evidence of mass graves around Izum, it's not clear who buried them and how they died. Nevertheless, police say they'll start exhumations tomorrow to get a clearer picture. In a surprise acknowledgement of friction with Beijing, the Russian leader, Vladimir Putin, has said he appreciated that China had questions and concerns over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The Russian president was meeting President Xi Jinping for the first time since Moscow launched the attack. President Biden has unveiled a series of measures aimed at countering hate fueled violence in the United States. At a special summit, Mr Biden said the aim was to foster stronger communities through national service and not to allow white supremacists to have the last word. Too much hate that's fueled extremist violence that's been allowed to fester and grow. You know, as a result, our very own intelligence agencies, our own intelligence agencies in the United States of America, have determined that domestic terrorism rooted in white supremacy is the greatest terrorist threat to our homeland today. Mr Biden emphasised the need for social media platforms to be held accountable. He called on Congress to get rid of special immunity for social media companies and to impose much stronger transparency requirements on them. The White House has described the transfer of migrants arriving in Texas and Florida to Democratic-led areas as a deeply alarming stunt. Earlier, Republican leaders in Florida and Texas ordered dozens of undocumented migrants from Venezuela and Mexico to be transported to the wealthy district of Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts and close to the vice president's home in Washington, D.C. The head of the U.S. League of United Latin American Citizens, Domingo Garcia, said asylum seekers were being mistreated to score political points. Many of these refugees, by the way, have health issues. I believe one had diabetes and had to get insulin. Uh, Babies that were brought here, and they were just literally dumped like human garbage in front of the vice president's house. That's unchristian, un-American, and something that should not be allowed. World News from the BBC. An office belonging to the UN's World Food Programme in Haiti has been ransacked by thousands of people desperately looking for food. Local media show pictures of people carrying away sacks of grain from the building, which was then set on fire. The incident in the northern city of Gonaive comes as the country is swept by waves of unrest triggered by a fuel price hike. A retired Mexican general has been arrested for his alleged role in the disappearance of 43 students in the city of Iguala eight years ago. General José Rodríguez was the commander of the local garrison. Will Grant has this report. The family members of the 43 have long claimed that their disappearance and apparent murder was a crime committed by the state, something the previous administration never accepted. However, a truth commission under President Andrés Manuel López Obrador recently described it as exactly that, a state crime. Furthermore, the then Attorney General, Jesus Murillo Caram, was arrested last month on charges of abduction, torture and obstruction of justice in connection with the case. A number of other arrest warrants against former officials and members of the military are still due to be carried out. Gunmen in northwest Nigeria's Katsina state have abducted at least 50 civilians from a village. Residents of Makiyawa said the attackers arrived in the middle of the night on motorbikes. The authorities say efforts are underway to rescue the hostages. The world of tennis has been reacting to the news that one of the all-time greats, Roger Federer, has announced his retirement at the end of the month. The 22 times Grand Slam winner, Rafa Nadal, said it had been a pleasure and a privilege to share these years with him. Billie Jean King, the former women's number one, said he'd captured the hearts of sport fans around the world. In recent years, he'd missed tournaments because of a knee injury. Next week's Labour Cup exhibition in London will be his last. That's the latest BBC News.